Oh, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company, and they're all in uniform. This is Bill Goodwin, inviting all you servicemen and women to enjoy another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our tenor Jimmy Cash, and Felix Mills and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, for days, George has brooded about his defeat in the election last week. We find him now in the corner drugstore, still brooding, as Gracie tries to cheer him up. Oh, now, don't let it get you down, dear. Brace up and eat your chocolate nut Sunday like a man. <laughs> but I'm disgraced. Washed up in politics. What if the Republicans got discouraged every time they lost an election? <laughs> We'd have two or three very discouraged people in this country. George Burns, one vote. <laughs> I'll never live it down. Well, now you just got to stop this worrying, darling. It's brought a tiny little wrinkle to your face. Where? Right there, between those two big ones. <laughs> and worry is positively ruining your figure. You're nothing but skin and bones. You've lost all that gorgeous flab. I haven't lost any weight You have too Here, step on the scale Here, look at this card I haven't lost a pound Well, George, it has your fortune on the back It says that you have talent and charm And should be a big success in politics <laughs> Some fortune Oh, well, let me get on the scale, George I want to see what my fortune is Oh, listen to this you will meet a poor little old man who needs your help. A poor little old man. George, do you need help? No. Oh. Well, darling, I have to do a little shopping. Will you be all right if I leave you alone? Yes. All right. Now, you enjoy yourself. Buy half a dozen of your favorite cigars. Or if you'd rather, spend the dime for a shoe shop. Yeah, I'll paint the town red. Goodbye, dear. See you later. Hmm, that's strange, Boss, and you will meet a poor little old man who needs your help. Pardon me, lady, could you give me a lift to Wilshire Boulevard? Why, Georgie Gasso! <laughs> Gracie, gee, this is embarrassing. I, I don't have my bus fare. I left my wallet in my other suit. Well, I guess the fortune was right. What's that? Oh, oh nothing, nothing. You get in. <laughs> Certainly great to see you again, Gracie. How have you and George been doing? Oh, well, I, I, I hate to tell you, it must be sort of depressing to hear that other people are doing well when you're broke. What broke? I'm not broke. I'm loaded. Oh, look, you, you don't have to pretend with me, Mr. Jessel. I'm your friend. Honest, Gracie, I'm... Well, don't be ashamed to tell me all about it. Now, look, Gracie... Look, uh, how long have you been a bum? <laughs> well, I'm not a bum. Financially, but I, I have, uh, I have plenty, I have plenty of money, plenty of money. Would five dollars help? Now, please, Gracie, don't open your purse. Oh, I wish you'd take it. Sometimes a loan can change a man's whole life. But look, Gracie. It changed George's life when I loaned him the money for our wedding ring. Well, thank you so much, Gracie, but I don't need it. Oh, don't be embarrassed. I know that someday you'll pay it back just, just as George will. Now, look. Gracie, I am not broke. I'm living like a king. See this spot on my vest? That's not for mustard. That's smoked salmon. A dollar fifteen a pound. On myself, I spill nothing but the best. There you are. There it is. Oh, I see. Too proud to borrow from a friend, huh? Believe me, I've never been better off in my life. I'm a movie producer now. Oh, poor Mr. Jessel. You, you've always tried to keep up appearances. Oh, this is murder. Well, it doesn't have to be. You can always leave your park bench and sleep at our house. But I don't sleep on a bench. You should. The ground is awfully damp at night. Well, all right, Gracie. I'll, I'll go to the old actor's home. If you came to our house, you could share George's bed. Well, it would be better to sleep with just one old actor. 
But look, Gracie, let me tell you something. I am doing very, very well. Oh, you're brave, Mr. Jessel, brave. Okay, I give up if that's the way you want it. I'm a tramp, a broken-down hobo, a bum. I'm starving, and I haven't eaten in a half hour. Oh, what a shame. Oh, this is terrible. Well, here's Wilshire Boulevard. Will you let me out? Oh, on this corner? Yes, on this side of the street. That's my side. Minnie Demusha works on the other side. <laughs> I'm so glad you're still here at the drugstore. I hurried back to talk to you. George, George, I'm frightened. What's the matter? Well, I, I just picked up George and Jessel. Gee, I don't blame you. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> what, what frightened me was he's broke. Broke? Yes. The same George and Jessel who used to be the favorite after-dinner speaker at the biggest box in town. Now the poor man hasn't got a spot to speak in. <laughs> Uh, Gracie, well, George... Well, it showed me what's at the end of the road for actors. Poverty, unhappiness. Gracie, Georgie Jessel is not broke. He's a big pro- he's a big picture producer doing very well. Really? Of course. Here, here's a headline in, in, in Variety about his latest picture. Oh, Jessel picks six, six, lays egg in Winnipeg. <laughs> See? Well, there you are. He was smart enough to get out of the acting business before it was too late. And you should, too. Now, look. Well, hi, folks. Say, what's all the serious discussion about? Bill, do you think George should leave the theater? Well, maybe he should. He's made plenty of other people leave it. <laughs> I'll see you later, Gracie. I'm going to the office. Goodbye, funny man. So thin-skinned. Well, can I buy you soda, Gracie? Mm, no, thanks, Bill. Help me settle my problem about George. It, it looks like all the smart men are becoming producers now. Jolson's a producer, Jethro Cantor, even Bing Crosby. I think George should join them. Really? Well, certainly he can produce anything Cantor or Crosby can. Well, he hasn't so far. <laughs> Bill, I'm going to ask Mr. Jessel to make George a producer. Well, Gracie, do you think Jessel will go for him? Oh, yes. We're very good friends. In fact, when we were all in vaudeville before I married George, Mr. Jessel asked me to marry him. Really? Gracie, uh, are you glad you married George instead of Jessel? Oh, sure. It's nice to be married to a smart, successful comedian. Really? Yes. But it's even nicer to be married to George. <laughs> And here is Jimmy Cash, our young tenor, singing about a fella on a furlough. Jimmy. I'm just a fellow on a furlough Out looking for a dream The one who's in my dream Every night, a lonesome fellow on a furlough in search of company, somebody who will be my guiding light. Oh, pretty lady, you'll hear me say, beautiful lady. Are you going my way? I'm just a fellow on a furlough Whose hopes are 
Well, Gracie has gone over to the 20th Century Fox Studios to try and get George a job in the motion picture industry. She's now in front of Georgie Jessel's office, talking to the receptionist. Is there something I could do for you, miss? Well, I'd like to see Mr. Jessel, please. Just a moment. Oh, Hazel! What is it, Shaley? <laughs> is Uncle George tied up? Yes, he's having a conference with Cousin Dave, Aunt Min, and Sister Sophie. Well, soon there's a young lady here to see him. You tell him you're closer to him. I am not. I'm only his second cousin, and you're his first. <laughs> oh, all right. Uncle George, there's a young lady here to see you. What? Uh, just a moment. Miss, are you a relative? Oh, no. She says no. Okay, Uncle George. You can go in, Miss. Uncle George says he's always glad to see someone from the outside world. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, Gracie, this is a surprise. What brings you out to my office? Well, first of all, Mr. Jessel, I want to apologize for doubting that you were a movie producer this morning. Oh, well, that's all right. It was just that somehow I've always thought of movie producers as important, distinguished-looking men. You know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know exactly what you mean, Gracie. Uh, and now for what I came to see you about. Oh, just a moment, Gracie. Hazel, I'm in conference. No visitors. Okay, Uncle George. Shirley, I'm in conference. No visitors. Okay, Uncle George. Emily, I'm in conference. No visitors. Very well, G.J. One of Zanuck's relatives slipped in by mistake. <laughs> um, Mr. Jessel, <laughs> how many of your relatives have you got working here? Well, it sounds like a lot, but actually there are only 19. 19? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. My goodness, one more and they'll be calling this place 20th Jessel Fox. I'll put in a call for my Aunt Tessie tonight. And now, Gracie, tell me, what is on your mind? Well, it's about my husband, Mr. Jessel. George isn't getting any younger, you know. Oh, you don't call George old, do you? Why, he can't be more than ten years older than I am. Who can? <laughs> well, there's always cancer. But tell me, what's on your mind, Gracie? Go on. Well, I... I'm worried, Mr. Jessel. What's going to happen to George when he can't act? Well, with that worry, you are at least 15 years too late, Gracie. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. I, I mean, who's going to take care of him when he's old and feeble? Well, the same girl who took care of him when he was young and feeble. But look, Gracie, why, why do you come to me for help? Between taxes and alimony, I'm lucky if I have enough left for bare necessities. Horses, gin, rummy. Oh, really? no, look, I... I don't want money from you, Mr. Jessel. I just want you to give George a job. Well, now, what sort of a job did you have in mind for your husband? Well, um, how about a job like yours? A producer? Are you kidding? Boy, that's the, that's the most important job in the movie industry. Really? Well, it takes years to learn how to be a producer. Oh, I see. You have to direct all the pictures, I guess. No, no, the director does that. Oh, but you write all the scripts. No, 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 the writers do that. Oh. Do you design the scenery? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, we have designers. They do all that. Oh. Know. I guess you work the camera. Oh, no, no. That's the cameraman. He, he does that. They... Well, Mr. Jessel, what's your job? Trying to keep Zanuck from asking that same question. <laughs> oh. And if you think it's easy to outrun those polar ponies, you're deaf, eh? But tell me. Well, then why, why can't my husband be a producer? He doesn't know easily as much as you don't know. <laughs> I won't try to discode that, but let's not argue about it. There are no producer jobs left at the studio anyhow. None at all? None at all. Oh, what about the manpower shortage? Well, the manpower shortage is more than made up by the relative surplus. <laughs> There must be some way I could get George a producing job here. Well, the only way a producing job would be open here is if I were to quit. And, um, I guess you wouldn't want to quit, would you? No. No. I, um, I guess you'd rather be out of the public eye and stuck away in this old office where nobody even knows about you. Well, that doesn't bother me. I, um... I guess you, you don't care about having your name in lights and having everybody talk about you as that great and funny comedian. That doesn't bother me. I uh, guess you don't care about those young girls waiting outside the stage door fighting to throw their arms about you. This bothers me. <laughs> and um, 
I suppose you're not interested in making a fortune in vaudeville. Now, wait a minute. How could all this happen to me? It happened to George. Yeah, but he met you before I did. Now, look, I might go. <laughs> I might go back in vaudeville if I had a partner like you to work with, of course. Uh, what did you say, partner? <laughs> You call me partner? You mean you'd work with me? Well, to further the career of my husband, there's nothing I wouldn't speak to. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. You want George to take my job, which consists of keeping 19 relatives happy. That's right. And you want me to take his job, which consists of... Well, it'll be interesting to see just what it does consist of. But anyway, it is a deal, Gracie. Now, what kind of financial arrangement have you and George got? Oh, oh that. Well, you know, before George got me as a partner, he did an act with a trained seal. A seal, yes, I know. Well, George was very fair. Even though I had no experience, George gave me the same contract he had with the seal. I see. Well, I'd be the last man in the world to lower your standard of living. I'll give you the same contract. Oh, thank you. All right. going to be a producer at 20th Century Fox. Well, that'll set 20th back about three centuries. <laughs> Gracie, how did you get Jessel to give up his job? Well, I agreed to team up with him and go into Vaudeville. Uh-oh. Does George know you're teaming up with Jessel? No, and I'm scared to tell him. You know, he's so quick-tempered. He might do something desperate. Really? Oh, yeah. He's liable to grab a butcher knife and run right over to Jessel's office and carve I hate you on his desk. <laughs> What a brute. <laughs> well, Gracie, what are you going to do? Oh, I've got to think of some excuse to leave him for a few weeks. Oh, I see. Well, listen, why don't you pick a fight with him and tell him you're going home to Mother? Pick a fight with that dear, sweet, innocent little man? Uh-huh. Oh, girl, that's a great idea. <laughs> I'll go right in the house and try it. Oh, I feel like a dog doing it, but after all, it's for his own good. That's right. Good luck, Gracie. Hello, darling. <coughs> Where have you been? Oh, nagging, 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 always nagging. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it anymore. I'm going home to Mother. Huh? Don't you raise your voice to me. <laughs> I didn't raise I it. I didn't raise it. I didn't raise it. Scream at me so all the neighbors will be in. <laughs> they know you hate me. But I love you. I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. <laughs> this got to sound like my sweetheart. Ho, oh, oh, ho, 
what does she sound like? <laughs> honey. Oh, honey. And I suppose I sound like ketchup. Huh? I'm going home to my mother. Oh, wait, sweetheart. I've got some wonderful news. Georgie Jessel wants me to take her job as a movie producer. Now I'll be able to buy you a fur coat. Oh, buy me a fur coat. Buy me a fur coat. That's all you know. I'm going home to my mother. But, sweetheart, you can't. Oh, well, well, here's the happy little couple. Oh, hello, Georgie. Come in. Hello, Mr. Jessel. Oh, nothing makes me so happy as to walk into a home and find a happy husband and wife. Unless it's walking into a home and finding just a wife. <laughs> See, Georgie, I sure want to thank you for giving me a chance at 20th Century Fox. And I want you to know I'll give you all the talents I've got. <laughs> you already have. <laughs> uh, huh? Well, didn't Gracie tell you who my partner's going to be in vaudeville? No. Well, uh... well, well, well I, I was just going to do that. Uh, excuse us, Mr. Jessel. I want to speak to George in the next room. Oh, of course. Why all the secrecy, Gracie? Oh, well, um, I thought you might fly off the handle when you found out that Mr. Jessel's going to work with your ex-partner. The ex-partner? Which one? Uh, Jose the dancer? Uh, Sam Gold the skater? Lily the seal? Uh, Lily the seal, that too. Jessel is going into... going to do a vaudeville act with that seal? Uh, you don't believe it, huh? No, I believe it. You do? Oh, see, that was easy. Huh? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, I'll go and make us some coffee, dear. I'll join you in a few minutes. Hey, Jessel is going to do a night with my old seal. <laughs> what an unpredictable guy. Well, George, did uh, Gracie tell you who my new partner's going to be? Yeah, great little performer you're getting. Uh, that I know. Yes, and she, she works for practically nothing. <laughs> yeah, that everybody knows. <laughs> Sure, at the end of the act, you just talk to a fish. <laughs> George, is that honestly all you ever gave her? Just a fish? Certainly. Raw fish. <laughs> Raw yet, without even a little piece of onion or some sour cream? <laughs> she, she... Sorry, George. She, she likes it raw. Now, let me tell you a little trick she does that'll make a great finish for your act. She balances a ball on her nose, barks Yankee Doodle, and at the same time, she spanks out rhythm on the bass drum with her tail. <laughs> Why, that's even a greater talent than Spike Jones. <laughs> no, but... Hi, fellas. Oh, say, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Jessel. Uh, I understand you're going back into vaudeville. That's right, and who are you, sir? Well, I'm Bill Goodwin, and I've got a great thing for your vaudeville act. A special arrangement of that song that you made so famous. Margie. What Margie? What famous? You've got me mixed up. You're thinking of the little Popeye man who used to be in the show business. Eddie, uh, well, it isn't important. There, by the way. <laughs> I wonder what kind of business that little fellow's in today. Uh, radio. Really? I must buy one from him. But anyway, son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Goodman, good it doesn't make yes, a difference, sir, but you yes. have me confused. You see, the song that I sing is My Mother's Eyes. Oh, yes, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd love to hear you do that right now, Mr. Jessel. Would you rather sing it or recite it? Well, I'll sing it. Well, go, go ahead. One bright and guiding... Uh, maybe you'd better recite it. <laughs> This isn't the kind of material Georgie needs. He's, he's going to do an act with a seal. A seal? I'm going to be with a seal? <laughs> well, you are, aren't you? Well, not unless your wife has grown flippers. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm working with Gracie. What? Gracie, come out here. Yes, dear. So you're leaving me to work with Georgie Jessica? Oh, oh, now, now, don't be jealous, dear. You are going to be my partner. You'll still be my husband. Oh, when evening shadows fall and I'm hungry for romance, only you can take me to see a child's foyer picture. <laughs> Look, you'll work with Georgie Jessel over my dead body. Oh, bless you too, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> well, <laughs> anything to improve the act. Forget it. Well, that's that, Mr. Jessel. You'll go back to 20th Century Fox, and I'll go back to George. 
I guess we'll both just have to grin and bear it. Well, I... Hello? Oh, oh, yes, 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 he's here. It's your mother, Mr. Jackson. Oh, well, thank you. Hello? Hello, Mama? Yeah, well, the whole deal is off. Yeah, George Burns lost it and spoiled up the whole thing. Now, don't call him that. No, he's not a big schlemiel. So he's about my size. Well, anyway, Mama, there's going to be no board of a lack, no. You can tell the 19 relatives to unpack. Goodbye, a seal they made me work with. What are you doing? Say good night to the people in the armed forces. George, do you think they had a good time? Well, I certainly hope so. Well, maybe if they wrote to us, we could find out. Why don't you ask them? All right. Um, fellows and girls, if you get the time, why not drop us a line and let us know what guest stars you think would be fun on our program? Or if there are any musical numbers you'd like to hear, we'd be glad to have them played for you. Sure. Just write George Burns and Gracie Allen... Armed Forces, Radio, Los Angeles, USA. Uh, don't forget now, we'd love to hear from you. Good night. Good night, everybody. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.